Parents serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adai Tano program. The all new 2018 Kona by Hyundai available at Cars Plus. IP&E fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Coming right up on Guam's primetime news, keen-eyed corrections officers caught another case of contraband items being thrown over the prison fence. We go live to Mangilao for the very latest. Plus, there is a growing boom for Guam's construction work, but is the island's private sector going bust? We've got more on the future of island industry coming up, and we also show you tonight how counselors are helping FD students cope after the tragic loss of one of their own. I'm Jason Salas. Thanks so much for tuning in and streaming us, everybody. Half a day and a good evening. An attempt was made to smuggle drugs and other items into prison as corrections officers made the rather concerning find this week. Our Nick Delgado joins us with more from the facility over in Mingilao. Half a day, Nick. Jace, drugs, sharp blades, and other items. Officers were able to intercept. It actually is what they found after it was apparently thrown over the fence near the general population area. DOC officers getting to it first before it ended up in the hands of inmates. These images released to KUAM show it all. One image showing the contraband wrapped up in black tape, the condition it was in when corrections officers found it. DEPCOR Director Tony Lamarena tells us an officer had been checking the perimeter around 4 o'clock Wednesday morning. The items were turned over to the Guam Police Department. There was suspected uh, uh, drugs, uh, and those items have uh, been turned over to GPD for evaluation. Once opened up, the images show what appear to be illicit drugs. It looks uh, possibly uh, marijuana and a white powdery substance. Again, because we don't have the capacity to test these items, uh, they have been turned over to GPD. KUAM has learned the baggies were filled with marijuana and meth. The package also included lighters, makeshift pipes, and sharp blades. These are, are, are blades that are more like uh, for crafts, uh, exacto uh, knives that with, the, with the handle. Uh, we have done uh, two shakedowns at uh, posts uh, in the general area where the contraband was found. Uh, there was no other contraband found at these posts, uh, but we are continuing our investigation because it is concerning. Items that prison officials say could have been used as potential weapons. Shakedowns were conducted in the prison units, but nothing else was found. Meantime, Lamarana leaves this message to others who might have the same idea about trying to smuggle contraband on the inside. Anyone uh, caught throwing in uh, contraband will, will be prosecuted to the full, fullest extent of the law. So. Uh, if, if they're willing to take that chance, uh, uh, you know, we will make sure they are prosecuted and, and uh, serve the necessary time that they have to do as a result of the, their attempts to bring in contraband into DOC. And the case is now in the hands of the Guam Police Department. Investigators are now trying to find the suspects involved. Now, KWM files show more than a couple dozen contraband cases reported so far this year here at the prison. This latest one making it their 29th case. For now, reporting from the DOC prison in Manila for Guam's News Network, Guahu Nick Delgado, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Nick, for that report in the field. And if you out there have any information about this or any other case, you're asked to call police or call Guam Crime Stoppers. Their number, of course, 477-HELP. That is 477-4357. Elsewhere, it was quite the frightening moment at a local elementary school today as one student there was carrying more than just books on the first week of school. Officials found a gun in his school bag as, according to DOE spokesperson Isa Baza, a bag search was done at Machananao Elementary School Thursday afternoon after the gun was first reported to a teacher. A student in possession of the weapon told officials it was found over the summer. DOE confirms the firearm was unloaded and it was secured without incident. GPD also responded to the GIGO campus to remove the firearm. There's been no word yet if the student faces any disciplinary measures. By way of a statement, Superintendent of Public Schools John Fernandez says, quote, We need to let our kids know that guns are not toys and should not be played with. In this case, we're very lucky that this incident did not go any further. Fortunately, the finding did not cause any disruptions to school instructional time. Well, an equally scary moment took place for one man on his way to get breakfast at a store here in Harmon. Court documents state the victim in this case had encountered Paul Nisarafak just moments prior on the road. 
The victim reported that the man was driving slow, so he overtook and then passed his vehicle. Nisada Fak then allegedly followed the victim to a nearby store where he grabbed the man by the shirt collar and put a knife to his throat, threatening to stab him. Fortunately, the store owner intervened with court documents not making mention of any injuries to the victim. Nisada Fak has been charged with aggravated assault and terrorizing all his felonies with a special allegation for possession and use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a felony. Well, up next is a story that's shaken our tightly knit island community as early this week, just days into the new school year, the home of the Friars lost one of their beloved brothers, Xavier Akima. The 15-year-old was found dead days after he was separated from his hiking group in San Carlos Falls. To help FD in these trying times, a group of mental health professionals was activated as early as Saturday night for students, staff, and also for parents. And as our Crystal Paco reports, here are signs of trauma to look out for and where you can get help. The Guam Behavior Health and Wellness Center's crisis response team is on top of it. When we got the word uh, Saturday uh, evening that there was a community crisis, we sent a team member out to assess the situation. We passed out um, our phone numbers, even our personal cell phone numbers. And then we worked quickly over the weekend. And at the request of the school, GBHWC has been at the Mingilao campus offering counseling services for those affected by Xavier's untimely passing. The team consists of social workers, counselors, licensed counselors, psychiatrists, and clinical psychologists like Dr. Mary Catherine Fegeger. So a couple of things that parents might want to look out for is children who are reporting they're having intrusive memories of the event. Uh, that it, um, it, it, they, they're sitting there, they're in the classroom, but then they're thinking about something related to the event. Uh, like, for example, it's been raining a lot late, lately. The driving into school, there's, you know, flooding in some areas. That could trigger people who have been exposed to an event such like this. Other signs of trauma include irritability or withdrawn behaviors. Some people uh, uh, might start crying and there's, they don't have any reason why they're crying, they're just saying they just feel sad. Um, the other thing is we want to watch out for any uh, kids who might feel um, that they just didn't do enough. It's a three-prong approach. One team goes classroom to classroom to speak to teachers and students, another team for parents, and a final team for the boys who had been hiking with Xavier. This team of crisis counselors, Dr. Fegeger says, is extra special. That's because it consists of GBHWC staffers who are FD alumni. We had them be part of the, the hikers crisis counseling group because they understand about Father, uh, Father Duenas and faith and brotherhood. So far, their presence at the Mingilao campus has been positive. Dr. Fegeger also applauding the school for their efforts to help in the healing process. I think Father Duenas Memorial School is doing an excellent job from having the daily masses at noontime. I think that's part of the healing as well. Boys have also been noticed to limit or avoid social media. We've put the word out for the teachers to mention in class um, and we mentioned to the youth that please monitor that and, you know, say things positive, you know, or just turn it off. There's a 24-hour crisis hotline if you need help. It is also uh, can be used for anybody who might be thinking of hurting themselves, but it can be also for crisis or just concern if you just need somebody to talk to. It's 24 hours. That number is 647-8833. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco. Well, nightly rosaries and mass are being held for Xavier at the Our Lady of Lourdes Catholic Church up in Jigo. Archbishop Michael Burns, meanwhile, has issued the following statement, writing, to Xavier's many close friends and classmates, as well as the entire close-knit community of Father Duenas Memorial School, you have experienced much loss and pain in such a short period of time. Please know, he writes, that your brothers and sisters in our Archdiocese are with you during these times. We are one body together in Christ. Again, Archbishop Michael Burns. Well, in other news tonight, emotions ran high at the Chamorro Land Trust Commission as several people appeared before commissioners wanting answers about their leases, which could be voided as a result of a May opinion issued by the Office of the Attorney General. Our next report is with Carmen Chalahi. More than two dozen people appeared before the CLTC commissioners, many with concerns about access to their property, unauthorized occupants, and the list goes on. You know, enough's enough. There's a lot of us here who is getting duped, you know? When is it gonna stop? 
And then there were others like Robert Celestial, who could lose his lease, which he switched with his cousin many years ago. He said he did nothing wrong and played by the rules that were given to him by the commission. And so I did. I followed all the procedures, went through all the lots of paperwork, lots of doors to open. And then uh, I was given our lot. Celestial is one of hundreds who are impacted by an opinion issued in May by the AG that stated the Chamorro Land Trust Act does not authorize or, quote, allow an applicant during his lifetime to transfer or switch places with another applicant. And according to the AG's opinion, any leases that involve this are, quote, null and void. According to CLTC documents, nearly 700 names and hundreds of leases were signed in which, quote, application rights or CLTC leases were transferred. Many of these instances involving original applicants who are still living. Since the AG opinion was issued, commissioners have been left to resolve the dilemma. So have you made a decision what you plan to do? No. Um, in fact, the, all summer the staff has been looking through all of the leases to find out which one of the leases fall into that, what the AG called null and void uh, category, where there's switches. Right. Um, and we have a list today that we'll be looking at um, and talking about a way forward. A way forward that board chairperson Pika Perrin said could involve going to the Guam legislature. Parent acknowledged that switching of leases was an allowed administrative practice of the CLTC for years, but the current commission must reconcile its past actions with its current situation, which has left people like Celestial in limbo. I was even uh, hesitant to come up here to speak on people that's on, you know, like me, that we were the ones who switched. We were told it was legal. We, we are now put on a different light. Like we are the ones that, that did something wrong and we didn't. No, I want to assure you that the commission is sitting here today and we know that our, that our job here is to act exclusively for you, our beneficiary. I thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, I know that you're not the only one. And, right. And, and we will absolutely Keep your best interest in mind as well as all, as well as all of our beneficiaries. Also during today's commission, the board decided to add an additional meeting for the first Thursday of every month to hear more concerns from applicants. Well, we had no intention in not being transparent. This, according to the Guam EPA's Director Walter Leon Guerrero, at an agency meeting late today. That agency recently responded to KUM's Freedom of Information Act request for documents pertaining to copious amounts of oil spilled by Nova, a Department of Defense contract hire. We reported that the contractor was slapped with a $100,000 fine. As Leon Guerrero says, the EPA is working closely with the military to prevent further spills. He adds a confirmed settlement for the dispute is currently under review. And for the time being, Guam EPA assures they will publish all documents on their website for public information. EPA is set to hear the appeal by NOVA on September the 14th. Well, we are going to take a quick pause, but please stay tuned. There is much more prime time when we return. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. A simple handshake. That's all Jake Calvo needed when he started his company. Today, 80 years later, we like to say thank you to all of you who have taken our hand in trust. Thank you to the dreamers. Thank you to the realists. Thank you to the family oriented. Thank you to the entrepreneurial. Thank you to those climbing the corporate ladder and to the ones starting a new life together. Thank you to the traditionalists and the edgy to the young at heart and the old souls. Thank you to the daring, to the protective, to the practical. Thank you to the hopeful, to all of you from all of us, our deepest, happiest, and infinite thanks. 80 years here for you, 80 years thanks to you.
Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. I've worked with everyone running for governor. I know what they've done and what they haven't. There have been so many missed opportunities to prevent the crises facing Guam. I know Lou would never have allowed GMH to go without resources. She would have closed the revenue loopholes so that the $8.1 billion military buildup generated additional revenue for Guam. She'll make sure our government lives within its means. I'm Carlotta Leon Guerrero, a Republican, and I'm voting for Lou and Josh. Please vote for them too. Win adventure in the ITME Explore Your World Million Mile Giveaway. Every week from July 16 to November 2nd, we're giving away 60,000 United Mileage Plus miles to ITME postpaid and prepaid subscribers. Imagine where you could go. Go on a weekend getaway to the Philippines. Enjoy fresh sushi in Japan. It's a dakimas. Sip a latte at a cafe in Paris. Or use your miles for shopping and other rewards. It's your world. Explore it. Are mom and dad here yet? Not yet. We didn't get our lane. We gotta stop for cash. I forgot my card. Just use your phone. Right. Forgot your Bank of Hawaii debit card? No problem. Because now you can get cash with your phone with cardless cash from Bank of Hawaii. Introducing Cardless Cash. Download the Bank of Hawaii app today. Welcome to tomorrow. Working guys like me usually don't run for office. My mom and dad worked hard to care for us kids. We were a family of farmers, and from the second I could pull weeds, I was on that farm every morning before church and every day after school doing what I could to help the family. Life wasn't easy back then, and it hasn't gotten much easier for us working class families. Food is expensive, power's going up, and buying a house is pretty much out of the question when paying rent is hard enough. It's unfair. It makes us angry, but we can do something about it. This election is about more than just fighting corruption or making promises too expensive to be kept. It's about hardworking, honest people doing their best to fight for a better Guam. Let's take Guam back, together. I'm Frank Blasogun Jr. and I approve this message. Welcome back my friends because the number of H2B, v H2B workers for military projects is on the rise but for civilian construction the approval rate remains at zero. Officials worry that while the buildup ramps up the private sector will lag further and further behind and that could be a drag on the local economy. National Oconto reports. The new defense spending bill assures that thousands of foreign workers are authorized to help build the facilities for the marine relocation. But Alien Labor Processing Administrator Greg Massey says the labor for private projects is addressed in a separate measure by Congresswoman Madeline Bordalio. That is a bill that would um, provide the governor uh, quite a bit more control over the local, uh, local control over the process. Uh, and would also allow him to determine temporary need, which has been our, our, our current issue. Currently, contractors haven't been able to get H-2 worker visas for non-military projects. This, despite temporary relief granted by an earlier court ruling. District Judge Francis Tadinko Gatewood ordered USCIS to revert back to when temporary foreign labor applications were more routinely approved. But Massey says ever since then, there's been no action. There have been several people who have uh, class members. It's a class action suit. Uh, there have been several several members who have applied for uh, approval to bring in H-2s, and none of their applications have been approved yet. Nothing's been denied, but nothing's been approved. So it's kind of been... It seems to be uh, kind of slow walking at this point. Massey would not comment on whether he thinks USCIS is purposely dragging it out, but he does say the inaction is having a chilling effect on civilian projects. Suppressed construction that could be out there right now. Um, it's driven up costs to some extent. With Build Up One, we saw a bunch of real estate development going on. We saw uh, a bunch of facilities going up, apartments, warehouses, all kinds of things going on. Um, that should be happening right now, and it's, we're not seeing it. Meanwhile, Bordalio's bill still needs to work its way through Congress, and the federal lawsuit against USCIS is pending. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto.
Elsewhere, the three candidates for public auditor appeared at a forum hosted by the Rotary Club. Outgoing Speaker B.J. Cruz, Acting Public Auditor Yuka Echenova, and Dr. Doreen Chrysostomo each gave an introduction, sharing their background and credentials. They then responded to a question about why they are running for public office. A public auditor has a responsibility to be able to go out there and say, no, this is, this is improper practice in accounting and to stick to it. And so I wanted to be able to go over to the public auditor's office and make some of those changes. And some of those changes being to the departments, no, you're not going to be able, you should be able to make your, your daily post, on a daily posting, so that when, in October 1st, you close the books. You don't close the books in June, the following June. Sometimes I meet people and they ask me, oh, where do you work? And I say, I work at the OPA, and they have no idea what we do. So clearly we are not communicating the value of our office to, to everybody. So that's part of my motivation is we need to move to that next step. And I felt like as a deputy, it really is my responsibility, and it's just time for me to move up, and, and I became motivated to run for office as well. I've done a lot of projects in the past, in my past experience, and they were successful. Uh, an example, the Guam legislature, when I was down there, they, I was the one that first issued the financial report, which hasn't been done in 10 years. I'm more proactive. I don't wait just because the law says that you can do it in nine months. Well, let me try and do it in less than nine months. Because with technology today, we can issue out that financial statements within six months. The top vote getter in next Saturday's primary election will immediately advance and take office as the next public auditor. And also tonight we have another health alert to pass along to you as public health officials say they could not connect the dots between a sick child and a food at a local restaurant, but signs of roaches were enough to shut it down. An inspection of the New Choi restaurant in Upper Tumon resulted in 58 demerits and a rating of D. Officials found an active roach infestation among other sanitary issues, resulting in an immediate hazard to public health and a shutdown. You can list the full violation list at KUM.com. Sports is coming up next. Please stay tuned. I've spent my career dedicating myself to the law Constitution of the United States of America and to making sure that people who have been wronged or hurt know that justice is on their side. And today, many people feel our government hasn't been doing right by the people, that their best interests haven't been served. Every day, we see news stories showing that our taxpayer dollars aren't being used responsibly and we're watching public hearings that make us feel like the truth is being hidden. These are the things that erode our people's trust in government. And that's what Frank and I are fighting for. A chance to rebuild your trust in your leaders and to turn this government around. Join Team Agandam Tiako. Let's take Guam back together, the right way. I'm Alicia Garrido Limtiaco, and I approve this message. Introducing the Alpha Plus app. With the rewards feature, you can earn points and get free rewards. Filing insurance claims gets no easier, as you can receive feedback within 24 hours. Easily check your insurance balance and insurance policy with the My Policy feature. So download the all-new Alpha Plus app on Google Play or the App Store. Alpha Plus. Make every day a plus. Here's the Guam I envision. An island where homelessness is obsolete. And the person standing on the side of the road is just waiting to cross the street. Where children will reach for a book instead of drugs. Where the discussion of expanding our prison is replaced by plans to build new schools. Where packed hospitals are replaced by crowded gyms. 
A Guam where poverty becomes the exception, not the norm. Where dropping out of school is unheard of and a college degree is expected. Where the military buildup becomes the Guam buildup because our people are presented with great opportunities. Education is the key to turning these into reality. That's why early childhood development, middle start, and tuition-free college are at the core of the Tenorio Ada platform. If you share the same vision for a stronger Guam, please vote Tenorio Ada. God bless us all, and God bless Guam. I'm Ray Tenorio, and I approve this message. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports, brought to you by Triple J. We'll hear from Roki Martinez in just a bit on his recent win in Japan. But first off, some men's varsity basketball highlights from the Timuning Gym. Check it out. The Island Chiefs and Timuning Typhoons will be meeting up in the championship game of the Summer Jam Tournament this Sunday. The Chiefs blew out team to Tua to advance while the Typhoons got by Fish and Con 74-64. J.P. Cruz led all scorers in the win with 29 points, hitting five three-pointers in the game. Billy Belger chipped in with 21. Action. Aisha put up 22 points in the loss for a fishing con. Teammate Max Kepway added 17. The title game tips off at 4 in the afternoon this Sunday at the Timuning Gym. Award presentations will be held after each championship game to include first and second place trophies, MVP, and the top scorer award. Visit GuamBasketball.com for game schedules, results, and stats. KUAM Sports caught up with Roki Martinez today to recap his fight in Ryzen 12. Martinez faced off against fan favorite Kiyoshi Kawabara in Nagoya, Japan. This fight was built around a lot of hype with two heavy-handed strikers looking for the finish. Going into the fight, you know, I got a lot of um, pressure to bring a fight because apparently the guy was uh, known as a slugger too, so... Um, I wanted to go in there and uh, with the game plan to knock the guy out. And uh, even when he started and the way he came out swinging, I, I knew he couldn't keep that pace. And uh, it's something that I knew I could, you know. And uh, I started seeing him fade a little bit. And, and man, once I see that you're starting to fade a little bit, that's when I start turning on. The fight came to an end in round one after Roki landed a kick to the head and followed up with some shots, forcing the referee to call off the fight. His fight record improves to 13-4-2 and, and improves his win streak to eight in a row. He hasn't lost a fight since 2011. The organization itself seems really happy in my performance, and it seems like they want me back. So hopefully soon, you know, I got a couple guys now on Twitter that are uh, asking to fight me. And, um, you know, I, I feel like I made a, made a good name for myself out there. So uh, hopefully soon, maybe September, October, uh, I don't know. So just wait and see, but I'll be ready. The Guam Football Association referee camp was held earlier this month at the Leo Palace Resort. Dozens of referees participated in the annual camp, which was held in preparation for the fall season of the Triple J Auto Group, Robbie Weber Youth Soccer League, which is set to officially kick off September 8th. New to the 2018 event was the duration of the camp, which was extended two full days with meals and an overnight stay at Leo Palace Resort, Guam provided for all participants. The camp concluded with a luncheon and a presentation ceremony. Each participant received a certificate of achievement from GFA Director of Referees, George Stewart, and GFA Executive Director, Sherry Stewart. Courses for new and returning youth league referees also will be held later this month. For more information about referee courses, visit the GFA website at guamfa.com or send an email message to GFA Referee at the guamfa.com. Well, that's it for sports. We're back right after this. Summer is here, and at Cars Plus and Mighty, that means big savings. During our summer clearance event, right now, save up to $8,000 on select 2018 Ram 1500 SLT Crew Cab, or save $3,250 on a 2018 Chrysler Pacifica. Voted Family Car of the Year. 1.99 APR financing is available for qualified buyers. Plus, buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card, where you get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Don't miss our summer clearance event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. 
Ready for some family summer fun? You guessed it! Sago Manyago is having their fourth annual kids carnival. Come to the Governor's Complex Lawn in Adaloop on Saturday, August 18th. The end of summer fun begins at 4 p.m. and lasts to 7 p.m. Free admission and free entertainment with children activities, music, dancing, and much more. Sago Manyago's kids carnival on August 18th at the Governor's Complex in Adaloop. Special thanks to Bank of Guam, Community First Federal Credit Union, Cabo Select Care, Addis Trust and Investment, Take Care, Stay Well, Guam Regional Medical City, Matson, and to all of our community sponsors. As a mayor, I see the first-hand struggles our people face. I see the real effects of tax increases and what happens when our government cannot deliver the services timely. I've heard the promises made year after year. I know what it really means when these promises go unfulfilled. Who do you trust to finally get things done right? I'm in with Lou and Josh because they have the experience to lead us and deliver what they promise. For a limited time, receive a free $500 Kmart gift certificate on selected new vehicles from Triple J Auto Group. Get the car, the savings, and the supplies just in time for school. Top of the class deals like 2018 Mazda 3 Sport for as low as $16,995. Or our big boy truck, the Ford F-150, starting at $298 per paycheck. Or the sporty and stylish 2018 Honda HRV at only $176 per paycheck. Get pre-approved instantly at TripleJGuam.com. Trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. Stop by today and... Go With Triple J Auto Group. Customers first. And now the inevitable moment we've all been waiting for, tonight's Cold Stone Creamery birthday shoutouts. Despite the weather today, let's bring some sunshine to today's Cold Stone Creamery birthday club inductees. They are led off from the entire family of Amity R. Sablan Diego. They love you, they say. Happy birthday, Amity. Tristan Bree Mendoza, happy 22nd birthday to our oldest grand and great grand. Love your family near and far. Also, happy birthday to a very, very special granddaughter. This is Kyra Elise Santos. May your special day and every other day bring you as much happiness as you are bringing to all of us. We love you from Gammy and from Papa. Also, happy birthday to Daryl Pareto. Happy blessed birthday with many more wonderful years to come. This comes with lots of love from Alvin, Lonnie, and the kids. And happy belated birthday wishes going out tonight to Kaylani Marie Simmons. Everyone, we hope you had a fantastic day. Now, each and every one of us, all of us at KUM and the Cold Stone Creamery, and that's a lot of people, we invite you to go to KUM.com and register your favorite birthday celebrant and tune in because they will be celebrated tomorrow. Stay tuned. There's more coming up after this. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E.